All right, so before we get into the actual substance of this video, I want to make my position on anti-U.S. interventionism very clear. So it doesn't take much to look throughout U.S. history and understand the consequences of U.S. interventionism, especially in the Western Hemisphere, especially in the Americas, whether it's in the Caribbean with countries like uh, Cuba and Haiti, or whether it's in Central or South America with countries like even today, Venezuela, Bolivia, uh, Peru, uh, you can go down the list, Nicaragua, Guatemala. We have literally had our fingerprints all over uh, Central, South America, and the Caribbean uh, through throughout history and in the worst possible ways. We have funded far-right uh, death squads, we have installed dictators, overthrown democracies, the list goes on and on. Uh, point being, if there was ever going to be an unqualified source to speak on authoritarianism or supporting uh, authoritarian regimes and, and what should be happening in the politics of other governments around the world, uh, it would be the United States. We have absolutely no moral high ground. We continue to this day to support authoritarian regimes like Saudi Arabia, who are currently committing a genocide. Uh, in Yemen, we support uh, governments like Israel, which is continuing an ongoing apartheid and genocide of the Palestinian people. So again, if there was ever an unqualified source to speak on what is happening in Cuba right now, it would be the, it would be the United States. And yet, somehow the entirety of uh, conservative media and Joe Biden as well have been circling the wagons and trying to basically push for regime change uh, based on some of the protests that we have seen against the government of Cuba. So I want to get into the details here. First, I'm going to show you just a couple of videos here. So uh, from one of these conservative freak show commentators that she says, the squad wants to turn this country into Cuba. People in Cuba can't afford a uh, groceries right now. Uh, the Cuban youth are done with socialism and are risking their lives to protest inalienable rights. So uh, here was one of the videos of the protests that they had, which was an anti-government protest. What it seems to be the, the actual substance of what they're protesting here is shortages in supplies. Now, um, there you could fault the Cuban government for a little bit of mismanagement. Sure, that would be a fair criticism. But uh, what you'll notice from all of these conservatives who are currently commenting on this issue is that they don't even mention the fact that the United States has had a ridiculous embargo on Cuba um, and also, in addition, sanctions as well uh, that have crippled their economy that have uh, reduced their capacity to be able to import supplies. So yes, of course, they're facing medical supply shortages right now when the United States is continuing this embargo, an embargo, by the way, um, in which w the UN Assembly, uh, General Assembly, just voted recently last month, um, 184 in favor of getting rid of the embargo. Two countries voted to keep the embargo. Can you guess which countries those were? The United States and our buddy Israel. So two countries, okay, in the entire world, basically, if you want to understand the international perspective, on how ridiculous uh, our handling of Cuba right now actually is, 184 countries, so 99% or whatever of the rest of the world understands um, that we are in the wrong in this situation, except for the United States and Israel, but somehow Americans, conservatives especially, still think that we are headed on the right path uh, with this stranglehold that we have on their economy. So um, in addition to the protests that we just showed that were anti-government protests, there were also protests that came out in favor of the government, and this is what you won't see uh, plastered across U.S. media. Cubans chant, I am Fidel, as thousands flood the streets and defend of the revolution. The revolution, by the way, in which uh, Fidel Castro and um, his revolutionary forces overthrew the Batista regime, which was a U.S.-backed dictatorship. Another key point of this, which nobody seems to ever mention. So again, while the Cuban government does have authoritarian aspects to it, um, the United States literally was, in the most recent sense, supporting a dictator in Cuba. So if you think that um, the United States' involvement right now in this conversation regarding Cuba has anything to do with protecting human rights, or freedom or democracy it absolutely does not and you don't even have to look at all of those other countries that we were mentioning you just have to look at the history of cuba and understand that we are perfectly willing to support dictators we are perfectly willing to support authoritarian regimes even within cuba as long as they are serving the interests of u.s uh, multinational corporations um and that's really what this really boils down to is the united states does not care about freedom democracy or human rights um all we actually care about is resource control and control over um labor markets in all of these countries around the world that we have been meddling in for decades including cuba so again, this is a mixed protest. There were protesters on either side, um, but continuing on, I want to read you a little bit of the details here. Good article from Common Dreams. So progressives call on Biden to lift U.S. embargo on Cuba as thousands protest critical shortages. Progressives in the U.S. and around the world on Monday demanded the Biden administration lift the U.S. trade embargo on Cuba and hundreds of sanctions on the country after thousands of Cubans protested the country's economic crisis, which has worsened, but which has been worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. The protests in Havana and several smaller cities and towns made headlines Sunday with major international outlets reporting on Cubans taking to the streets to express outrage over food and medical shortages. 
uh, food and medicine shortages. Demonstrators chanted enough and freedom, while one person told the AP, we are fed up with the queues, the shortages, and as The Economist reported earlier this month, food exports from the U.S. to Cuba, which imports about 70% of its food and relies heavily on goods exported from the U.S., uh, recently reached their lowest level since 2002. And last month, The Inter Intercept reported that the decades-long U.S. trade embargo against Cuba, as well as sanctions imposed by the Trump administration and kept in place, importantly, uh, by President Joe Biden, has kept Cuba from accessing critical uh, foreign-made medical supplies to treat its own population during the pandemic, even as Cuba sent more than 2,000 medical professionals uh, uh, to help fight the global crisis in other countries. And according to the Intercept, Intercept large shipments of ventilators, masks, and syringes have been unable to reach Cuba since the pandemic began uh, due to companies' financial ties to the United States. So in other words, a lot of the blame for these shortages that people are out there protesting the Cuban government over are in large part uh, the United States would be responsible for that, given that we are waging this ridiculous uh, embargo and sanctions war against uh, the Cuban people. So again, uh, a lot of these conservatives that are coming out and commentating on this and acting as if, oh, this is a rejection of all of the socialist policies that the Cuban government has had. Um, this is not actually an accurate portrayal of the current situation. People are protesting shortages, shortages, again, which in large part are caused by the United States and shortages in which Joe Biden's administration, if he wanted to, uh, could with the stroke of a pen eliminate. And um, if he actually cared about the humanitarian consequences of what is happening in Cuba right now, he would immediately be prioritizing getting rid of this embargo and the sanctions that are crippling their economy and causing them to not be able to import uh, the, the adequate medical supplies and food that they actually need to supply for their people. So um, continuing on, this is what Joe Biden had to say instead of talking about that. He says, we stand with the Cuban people as they bravely assert their fundamental and universal rights and as they all call for freedom and relief from the tragic grip of the pandemic and from the decades of repression and economic suffering, decades of repression and economic suffering that Joe Biden conveniently does not point out have been directly caused by, again, the United States embargo on Cuba. So uh, he doesn't really mention the accuracy of what's actually happening on the ground in Cuba, what's causing some of these problems. Um, he's really just taking the same approach that you would expect from somebody like Donald Trump, uh, not just in the rhetoric that he is deploying in tweets like this, but also in the policies that he is deploying because because again, he has not undone any of the sanctions, the over 200 sanctions, I think it was, that Trump's administration put in place um, on Cuba. They also, Donald Trump's administration, added Cuba to a, a terrorist, um, a, a designated them as sponsors, state sponsors of terrorism, um, as if, again, the United States is not one of the big, biggest exporters of terrorism around the world. Um, we are constantly doing this. We work with the CIA to do terrorism literally in countries like Cuba, all around Central and South America, in the Middle East, etc. Again, the, le the least qualified country in the entire world to to comment on matters like that. But yet again, um, we completely ignore our own atrocities in order to condemn very specifically the Cuban government, um, never the Saudi Arabian government, never the Israeli government, never the Colombian government, which there are massive protests happening right now in Colombia. Um, it's amazing how we only seem to care about freedom and democracy when it comes to our uh, political enemies who happen to be left-leaning, um, but never when it comes to the extremely right-wing governments that we support. It's amazing. You know, it's almost like this isn't about freedom and democracy, and it's all about resource control and uh, control over their labor markets. So so um, continuing on, here's where we get to the absolute freak show. So Miami Mayor Suarez spouting propaganda on Cuba. The U.S. has a vested interest and a right, a right to intervene on behalf of the Cuban people, but also on behalf of the United States. So I'm not going to play you this entire clip, but basically what he was saying is that the United States has an obligation to do regime change in Cuba. OK, so this is the narrative that's coming out from the right wing uh, in the United States right now. Understand this again. This is the mayor of Cuba. So uh, Miami obviously had or sorry, this is the mayor of Miami, which obviously has a large Cuban American population. And um, they are a very far right Cuban population. They're, you know, overwhelmingly Trump supporters. Um, so it gives you a gauge on exactly where he's coming from. This is an extremely far right right mayor who again is trying to promote uh, regime change in a regime change in a country uh, that we have absolutely no right to intervene with in any way shape or form so this is what the right is calling for right now <clears throat> and uh just to give you a uh, perspective on the history of this a little bit. So um, this is the explicit purpose that was laid out by the United States government on why we are involved in Cuba. So memorandum from the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs to the Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs. They say uh, the only foreseeable means of alienating internal support is through disenfranch disenfranchisement and disaffection based on economic dissatisfaction and hardship. Um, if the above are accepted and cannot be successfully countered, it follows that every possible means should be undertaken promptly to weaken the economic life of Cuba. If such a policy is adopted, it should be the result of a positive decision which would call forth the line of action which, as adroit and inconspicuous
US as possible, makes the greatest inroads in denying money and supplies to Cuba to decrease monetary and real wages to bring about hunger, desperation, and the overthrow of the government. So in other words, the reason we are maintaining these policies, these sanctions, these emb this embargo on Cuba has nothing to do with humanitarianism, has nothing to do with promoting freedom and democracy. It's just about overthrowing the government. So let's can try to continue to push back against these conservative um, freaks who are coming out here and pushing this narrative that there needs to be regime change. Um, the, everybody, of course, has the right to protest their government, um, but this is not a protest against socialism in general. It's not a protest against communism in general. This is a protest against austerity measures that have in large part, again, been caused by the embargo that Joe Biden's administration is continuing against the Cuban people.